destruction in Springdale. Stuff just flying around there. It was just, it was totally nuts. Multiple people injured tonight, a confirmed EF2 tornado causing miles of debris. We don't know how we live. Uh, just to be alive is, we're very grateful. A school damaged, businesses leveled, homes destroyed, and crews working through the day to assess the damage. We were afraid because it felt like the windows were about to shatter on us. Now a disaster proclamation in effect and a community coming together to pick up the pieces. We're gonna figure out a way to make sure we get through this day together. We have team coverage across the area in this special half hour report on the destruction in Springdale. Thanks for being with us tonight here at six. I'm Erica Thomas. And I'm Darren Bob. We are out in front of Jean George Elementary School in Springdale. We're going to step out of the way and show you that this is one of the schools, uh, one of the buildings that was hardest hit by this now confirmed EF2 tornado. That used to be the gymnasium there. They have been working all day to get that uh, cleaned up. It's going to take a while. Now we can tell you this tornado had roughly a three mile path starting in the Johnson area. It tore through Southeast Springdale. A disaster proclamation has been issued with search and rescue crews and the Army Reserve all across the area helping with damage. The tornado started before dawn and now confirmed by the National Weather Service as an EF2, meaning winds were up to 135 miles per hour with this. I'm out here just in front of the uh, hardest hit area, one of the hardest hit buildings across uh, the area. This is Jean George Elementary School. It's just off Robinson uh, in Springdale, off Powell Avenue in Springdale. The school will be open tomorrow. Of course, we'll talk more about that coming up in just a minute. Another very hard hit location, not too far from here at the Nilsic Advance location. Matt Standridge has been out there pretty much all day today. He joins us now to tell us what, you're, what is happening out there now, Matt. Hey Darren, it's been a long day for us in Northwest Arkansas in the River Valley. We've had wind reports area wide, but right now we're in the path of where that EF2 tornado, that high end EF2 tornado uh, struck. We're at the Nilfus plant. That's right off Robinson here on the south side of Springdale. We're just a cut stone's throw away from the Springdale airport. Right now I'm at the receiving area. What can you receive now? This is what's left of the plant here in Springdale. What they do here is they manufacture industrial floor cleaning equipment and millions of dollars of damage have now taken place. So we've had damage to people's homes. We've had uh, the school damage there in Springdale. And then this is what it looks like on the business side here in the industrial sector of Springdale. So this storm came in from the southwest, but when you just look at the, so the sheer size of this thing, I mean, this tornado could have been a couple hundred yards wide. The National Weather Service is wrapping up their survey as they speak, we actually ran into them a little bit earlier. Uh, we think that it probably picked back up a couple hundred, a couple thousand feet here towards the north and east. Here at this plant, we were talking with a security guard earlier, and he said there were a handful of people still in the building when the tornado struck, and one lady had to get underneath her desk in order to get shelter, and they had to dig her out earlier this morning. Earlier this morning, there was also a gas leak, so this was a very dangerous situation. Uh, but with some of this damage, I want to show you guys, we have metal that's just been ripped apart, the roof, the siding. Uh, it's kind of a weird uh, sound area here where you just hear the echoes of some of the metal with that wind. That northwest wind is killing us today, and now it's getting a lot colder, and so we still have several thousand power outages across western Arkansas, and so we're thinking about our friends and neighbors and and family members who are going to be in the cold. Uh, but we want to send it back to you, Darren. We've got team coverage of the storm path, this tornado damage right here in Springdale and Johnson. Back to you guys. All right, Matt, thanks. A lot of devastation there. We've seen a lot of devastation and around this, uh, this elementary school and neighborhoods just across the way. We did tell you that there were seven people injured in this. At one point, Micah, there were two people that were critical. You've actually been uh, checking on updates and going around to some of these neighborhoods. You do have an update and some good news with some of these injuries. Yeah, thankfully, I first want to report there are no reported deaths. And then I want to say that we know that three of those people that were injured, they were transported and taken to Washington Regional Hospital, while four of those people, they were taken to Northwest Medical Center in Springdale. But some people, they didn't even report their injuries because they didn't go to the hospital. I spoke with one woman who she got injured and she went to a clinic nearby and she got her stitches done in the dark. January of 2009. 13 years, yeah. 
For 13 years, this was Kenny and Melissa Lipsmeyer's safe haven. You can see some of the blood that we left behind. Early Wednesday morning off South Thompson, their safe haven was destroyed. Oh my God. Incredible. We don't know how we lived. Uh, just to be alive is, we're very grateful. They were in bed when the tornado ripped through. Yeah, uh, windows are just totally taken out. It only lasted a few seconds, but those seconds felt like an eternity. Even though we were covered, we were trying to get out of bed, but we were being held down by the wind, by what, whatever furniture landed on us or whatever it was. They eventually went to get their injuries checked at a local clinic, but the power was out there as well and Melissa needed stitches. I got him in the dark with his nurses holding their cell phones, flashlights. Kenny saying it's now neighbors helping neighbors. The people coming together. Neighbors do that. Family does it. First like. Yeah, and Darren, I was out there today. I told you we got there at around 11 a.m. And before then, we know that there was neighbors helping each other, like he just said, because, I mean, the devastation, it, oh, yeah. was, it was. All right, we're having a few technical issues there. We can see Darren and Micah, but we cannot hear them. We are going to move on, though, to Brashear's furniture. It was damaged on Thompson in Springdale today, heavily damaged by that tornado. From the outside, it looks like just part of the roof was ripped off, but inside, the damage is much worse than that. Inside, the roof damage throughout the building. Furniture was ripped out. Susan Brashears and her husband opened that store in Springdale in 2007. She found out their building was damaged while watching the news this morning and seeing their building in the background. She says seeing their store like this is a lot to take in. We've had just had an outpouring already of all the community and people that want to help. And, you know, we're at this point, I think, looking for a warehouse to move all of the furniture in and then go from there, try and secure it. So it's um, it's going to be a project and we've a lot of unknowns right now. But it's um, the concern is where do you even start? Brashear says they'll be making the needed repairs and will be back open, but there is no timeline for how long that could be. Now, the damage from this tornado has impacted multiple neighborhoods across Springdale. Five News reporter Catherine Gilker is at a mobile home park in Springdale where they're without power and have some of the worst damage from the storm. I'm here at Woodbridge Estates Mobile Home Park off Powell Street in Springdale where many of the homes were damaged by this morning's tornado. Many of the people living here tell me it all happened so fast. Many homes had trees fall into them. In one of those homes, a man was trapped inside his house after the tree fell into it, but neighbors were able to rescue him and take him to the hospital. Lots of RVs were flipped on their sides. It was just after four this morning when people living in the mobile home park were woken up. One man says his bedroom window was broken and another woman says it was the electricity going out that warned her something was wrong. Then all of a sudden I heard the god awful noise of what a tornado sounds like. There, there's no de there's no definition for it. I knew we were, we were getting hit. Flipped over and it went into our house and I'm just thinking that if something if the wind was a little bit stronger it could have maybe crushed us in the room. But I'm glad uh, we're safe. The man who was injured inside his home here at Woodbridge Estates Mobile Home Park is in stable condition. In Springdale, covering news where you live, Katherine Gilker, 5 News. All right, Catherine, thanks. Now, the National Weather Service has confirmed this was at least an EF2 tornado that tore through Springdale and Johnson. We've shown you a lot of the damage all across the region, but Michelle, put this into perspective for us and show us where this damage is in relation to each other. So right now, we we think this started in Johnson, kind of right around the mall, touched right. down there, and then moved into Springdale. This is kind of what we think it, the path is right now. The National Weather Service is, like Matt was saying, he's out there surveying the damage. It takes a few days to kind of survey the damage. Uh, they went out there, gave an initial rating of an EF2 at least, which is anywhere from 111 to about 135 miles per hour. It could be a higher end, 135, but they'll give us updates as they have uh, information, but this is where we think it started and where it ended. So we think it started around the Johnson area, about the mall, moved across Highway 71, moved into uh, Springdale, just to the southern part of Springdale, and then Highway 412, and that's where George Elementary School, where Darren was, is right here. Brookhaven Apartments is right there at 
as well. Caused a lot of damage, but right now at least an EF2. This was a very quick and brief spin up. It happened a matter of minutes, and this is what it looked like from 4 to 410. And that pink right there, that's where it happened. Uh, but we are expecting more rainfall for this weekend. Eric, I'll let you know if we're expecting any severe weather coming up. All right, Michelle, thanks. Multiple leaders sending support tonight to Springdale. Governor Asa Hutchinson says he's been in contact with the mayor of Springdale. Hutchinson says search and rescue teams have been deployed due to the significant damage and injuries. And we have multiple disaster emergency proclamations issued. The first one from Washington County Judge Joseph Wood. In it, he says they've activated the Army Reserve to help aid in cleanup and recovery efforts underway in Washington County. He went on to say his prayers are with the citizens who were injured or suffered damages to their homes and property and the businesses that were negatively impacted. Also issuing a disaster proclamation, the mayor of Springdale. In it, he says first responders have done door-to-door -door searches and believe everyone is accounted for. The declaration will help the city of Springdale get aid, relief, and assistance from county, state, and federal agencies for cleanup. And open right now, the Red Cross has opened a shelter at Journey Church NWA. It's uh, in Springdale on South Mantajani Road. They ask that people who come bring any necessities for a couple of days. And we do have a complete list of support for those impacted by this morning's tornado for all of those resources and how you can help give back. You can go to our website at 5newsonline.com.